All right. Okay, brothers and sisters. And now, this is number two. I This is our second uh, half. And uh, the reason why I say that uh, there's a spirit behind every government, there's a spirit behind every person that's successful, there's a spirit... There's, if, you don't, if you don't have a spirit behind you, right, then you're not going to be successful. And the only spirit we need is Jesus Christ, the Father and the Holy Ghost. Okay? Actually, how many spirits is that? Okay? Um, let's count, okay? We got your spirit. That's one. The Father. That's two. Jesus Christ. Because the Jesus, uh, the Father's in Jesus. That's two. That's uh, three so far. Then the Holy Ghost, the seven spirits. That's ten. Now, isn't Daniel ten times wiser than everybody else? <laughs> okay, that's how I figure it. Okay. So let's do that again. Okay, you got, you got your uh, say, you got your body. Then you got your mind. Then you got your spirit. The inner spirit. You have Jesus Christ. And then Jesus Christ. You have the Father. Now that's a connection. Just think of that as a neural link, okay? You know how Elon Musk got his neural link in his brain? Well, that's our link right there to the Father's throne. It's going to another dimension, okay? Because God lives in another dimension. And then what comes through that link? Think of electricity. Think of the Holy Ghost, okay? Now, um, I want to tell you that the Holy Ghost is a person. Hmm. The Holy Ghost is uh, seven spirits all one. And then plus Father and Jesus, they're all one too. But, you know, they break it down like that because, uh, you know, like, for instance, if I was God, I wanted to tell you who I am, and you you couldn't comprehend me all once, I'd have to say, okay, mm. see, this uh, This is a finger. I have a finger. See, this. Uh, I use this finger. Then I have three more other fingers and a, and a thumb. I use that to grab food to eat, Okay. Or then you could say, well, you know, I have an eye. And what that does is bring images into my eye, into my brain, so I can understand things and see things, what's out there. Then I would tell you maybe I have an ear. See, because you couldn't understand my finger, my eye, and my ear all once. Okay. So, but if I have a plan to expand your capability, one day, I can say one day, I'm going to expand your capability and you'll be able to see me face to face as I am. How's that? So, there's a, uh, success means there's a spirit behind you. Now, Success, you have to have the right spirit because you know what? We have the Holy Spirit. We have God the Father. We have the Son, uh, the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Because that's the ultimate spirit. Now, why do I say that there's a spirit behind everything to get you success in this world? Because why do I say the spirit controls the world? Okay? I say the spirit controls the world. Okay, this is why. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay? Let's go right back to Genesis, okay? Genesis. Genesis 1-1. One, one. Okay. See, it doesn't change, okay? Uh, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay? 
And how do you do that? God said, right? God said, God spoke. Didn't I say that in John chapter 1, verse 9, that he's inside of you? He's the light inside of you? And in the verse 12, 1 John verse 12, that is the, the result of this, uh, he wants you to become his uh, fullness of his son and, and daughters, right? In Jesus, Jesus is the head, but, you know, he wants you to uh, enjoy, enjoy the sonship, his sonship. And now, if we're going to be like adopted, full sons and, and daughters of God, you know, God says... That when you speak his word, your word is just as powerful as he is speaking it. Okay? If you're like a sheik, I picture a sheik like this. You know, they got uh, like a, a white cloth on. And then over here, above the forehead, they have like gold bars going up and down. Like this. Yep. And maybe they're, or maybe they're, it's rounded on top. And just go short. That looks nice. Okay. So. Uh, if you're a king, then you know if you tell your subject, uh, your servant to do something, Maybe you uh, have a, a a government official, a government official that you assign to go to this town and uh, tell them that they have to pay tax on a lobster another percent. Okay, so you told him, say, uh, Ali Bobby, I want you to go down to this town, um, El Porte, and tell them they have to pay X to one percent on a lobster. Because all the land is mine, the earth is mine in my kingdom, and the lobster, all the lobsters they take out of the sea and oceans is mine too. Everything's mine, and everything's taxable, and I not want another 1%. So uh, he goes down there, and he tells the people that. He says, let's say is the king. 1% more for the lobster. So you know what? Uh, then his word is just as powerful as you're saying it. Because here, he, here comes your servant now with bags of money, and they pay the 1%. But they didn't hear you speak it, they heard him speak it. In your name. Okay, that's how that works. My, when I speak, God's word is just as powerful as him speaking it. That's why I can go and make those shorts and command the evil spirits to be abound and feed, set people free. When he tells me to do that, I do it. I don't even bat an eye. It don't take me no extra energy either. Because has not God set, uh, sent into this earth all his ministering spirits to make his ministers a flame of fire? But when I speak, fire comes out of my mouth. Okay, uh, all of heaven's resources back up where I say. Okay. Just like uh, if I was a, a, a Roman, uh, a senator or whatever, right? And then um, I, I, I said uh, to arrest this man. And then, you know what? They, the soldiers would have to arrest them. Because I spoke it. Whatever I speak, they do. I have the force of the government behind me. Uh, if I'm working for God, and I am, I have God's army around me. Uh, whatever I say, he does. So like now, when I do this here, I said before in scripture, that I, I have already said in my prayers, when I do this, all the prayers I ever said, past, present, and future, that is in God's will, I'll carry it out immediately. And in those prayers, that's uh, the devil's being uh, 
exiled from my life. That's blood of Jesus being poured out all over the place. That's God's angelic presence, uh, you know, uh, purifying the place. You know, that's setting me free. That's uh, binding the tormenting spirits, everything, you know. See, the devil tries to torment me too, right? So I go like this here. Now, you know how the owl, uh, devil has this owl every day? We want uh, everybody to worship the owl and everything. Well, see, I make fun of the devil, right? And his little uh, owls and stuff, right? I go like this. It's Bohemian Globe Owls. Because this is my Jesus owl, right? See, I see the devil at work. And you know what? I bind the devil on Jesus' name. See? Woo, 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 woo. And that's funny, huh? So you can have some fun, okay? Because God laughs at the devil. So why can't we? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to know that there's a spiritual power behind every success. Now, if someone's succeeding over you, though at your level, whatever, you need to take it to the spiritual authority over that. Okay? <clears throat> okay. So, for instance, okay, the blessings of Abraham. Why do the Arabs have so much money? <clears throat> they have more money than anybody else on the planet. And that's because of the blessings of Abraham. And God said in the last days, I'll give you the oil. But you know what? In the last days, I'll give you the oil. What's the true oil? The true oil is all of the Holy Spirit and all the understanding of God's word. The wisdom, like King Solomon. That's the true oil. Now, they give the Arabs their black oil, the red oil, whatever comes out of the earth. But we have the living oil, the living water. We have those, uh, the, the wisdom of Solomon. Okay? So the wealth of the world is ours. Okay, they give us, they're going to say, just give us, uh, just like Egypt, just give us everything. Just say, get get out of here, okay? And uh, we're going to take the wealth of the world with us. You know, and the true wealth is not pearls or gold or silver or diamonds. The true wealth is knowing God and having the Holy Spirit inside of you. Eternal life is a true wealth of the world. So when we leave, we're taking the true wealth of the world with us. And that's eternal life. So when God separates uh, eternal life from the world, when the eternal life is the Holy Spirit and his people pull out of the earth, what's left? Then what's left to the world is death. Because the devil represents death and God represents life. So here we got, we got right now, we got life and death struggling together. But you know what? Pretty soon, you know, see, I, I said make those shorts, uh, my sh mobile shorts on YouTube, and I command right there, the devil will come out of people right there, they get looking at the mobile phones right there in the bars and the nightclubs, maybe someone's puking out in the parking lot, or maybe someone just got stabbed, and they're seeing the healing power of the Lord and the glory of God coming all over them, right? Okay? Because God's working as uh, fast as he can because he's going to separate the life from this world. And what's going to be left is death. The cup of death for the world. The pale horse in finality. Okay? is The toxic, this world is going to be toxic, pure puke. Okay? Because all the goodness is left. Okay, let's look at it this way. Okay, say you're eating an apple. Okay, you eat an apple. The apple is goodness. It represents life. So you're eating it, right? That's humanity. That's the world, right? So you know what comes out? What's left over after you pull all the goodness out? When you pull all the goodness out of the world, what's left? Poop. After Christ leaves the world, if you're still here, nothing's going to be left but toxic poop. Poop. And you know, in the Bible it said... In the Bible it says 
that he's going to make your here make your house uh, a shithole. Okay. Uh, and that's in the Bible. Okay. That he gonna uh, what they would do if you displease God, uh, he, he he commanded the people to uh, take all the dung they collect up from the city and dump it in your house. So let's see, dung uh, house. Oh, test. Oh man. Okay, dung in the Bible. Let me see. That's right. Here it is. Uh, it is. Uh, I'm getting one Samuel two eight, Psalms one thirteen verse seven, Lamentations chapter four verse five. Okay, right, one Samuel two. Chapter 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8 Psalms 113 verse 7 and Lamentations chapter 4 verse 5 Samuel 1, 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8 Psalms 113 chapter uh, verse 7 Psalms chapter 113 uh, which is Psalm 113 verse 7 Lamentations chapter 4 verse 5 is significant of the lowest and most wretched condition to turn a house into a dunghill. Daniel chapter 2 verse 5, uh, Daniel chapter 3 verse 29, or to be flung upon a dunghill. Uh, Luke chapter 14 verse 35. Makes the extreme of uh, ignorance. You know what I mean? Also dung, you know, ignorance. Like dong too. Okay. So oh oh. So uh, there's even a dung gate. It says dung gate. The gate was probably so named because outside it was uh, the general dump heap of the city. Visitors in recent years riding outside the city walls of Jerusalem on their way to the Mount of Olives or Jericho may have witnessed such a dump against the wall, which has existed for generations. Wow. Wow. Uh-huh. So, uh, let me see. 13 verses about dung and manure. Uh, okay. Well, I know in the Bible it says, he did, do you displease God? He would turn your house into a dung hill. Okay? So, if, if the house is like the world, and you turn it into a dung hill. I mean, your house is going to be turned into a dung hill because God is leaving. All the goodness of the world is leaving. Okay. I'm just going to post this here, and if we want, we can come back to it later, right? Let me just post this over there for you. And uh, what, what this is, because it's, it's not going to show up on YouTube when I, uh, when I put it up there. This is a uh, HTTPS uh, forward slash Bible dot knowing dash Jesus dot com. So it's uh, Bible dot knowing dash jesus.com so it's actually knowing dash jesus.com and one of the topic is dung and manure so I know that doesn't sound pretty but you know what you said I told you everybody makes their own version of Jesus and one of those things is uh
Let me see. Am I live now? Okay. Oh, yeah. There we are. Make sure I'm live. Let me see if this is working. Yeah. Let me see. Am I live now? All right. Oh, can we post this for you? So you don't think I'm lying, okay? There we are. And that way, you can see, okay? Uh, you can read all about it yourself. Now, what I'm going to do now is I want to go to Psalms. So let me open up my little computer over here. Okay. Turn on my computer. Boy, I hope you're enjoying uh, my broadcasts. Uh, I enjoy making them. I enjoy making my broadcasts. I enjoy making my broadcasts. Okay. And you know what? Even though if, if nobody's right there right now, I know people will be watching it later when they wake up. So I want to make it as good as possible. So, uh, that's important to you know. So you understand the state of your house or the world, the state of the world when Jesus Christ leaves and after the rapture. When the rapture happens now, uh, that's why God is going faster and faster and he's moved out of these church houses. Uh, he'd done that a long time ago because just say for the same reason he's torn down Jerusalem, for the same reason he let Jerusalem be torn down, for the same reason the temple got torn down, is because they were worshiping that instead of God. He, he always wanted the temple to, of the Holy Ghost to be you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And it says that in 1 Corinthians, or, or 2 Corinthians, temple of the Holy Ghost. You can just type temple of the Holy Ghost and you'll find it. I believe 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 or something. Oh, here, temple of the Holy Ghost. So, anytime you stop worshiping something other than, uh, when you stop worshiping, start worshiping things, more than God, that's the way he could take it away from you. Temple of Holy Ghost. Anything can be an idol. Okay? So, we have so many different uh, versions of Jesus in our hearts that uh, when I put that up there, I guess he wanted me to post uh, about uh, the manure and dung to show you that maybe that's not... In your version of Jesus, to uh, uh, in your Bible, you don't think that's in your Bible or your version of Jesus, right? Because Jesus is the Word of God, but God's showing you that maybe you know your version of Him is a little off. Maybe you need to reconsider some things. It says, uh, 1 Corinthians three seventeen. And he represented the whole company of believers, souls and bodies, that is the church as the temple of God, the spirit. So here, the body of each individual of Christ is viewed as the ideal temple of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, the temple of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 the temple of the Holy Ghost okay right there it says flee from sexual immorality every uh, every other sin a man can commit is outside his body but he who sins sexually sins against his own body do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost do you, don't you no, your body and your te your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. They use Holy Spirit there. That would the Holy Ghost, same thing. All right. You sin against your whole body, your own body, in sexual immorality. 
Now let's go here. Uh, okay, we're going to go to our Psalms. We're going to do chapter uh, Psalms 20. Psalm 20. See, the book of Psalms is more than one Psalm. Psalm, it's correct to say Psalm when you're referring to one. Okay, Psalm 20. Okay. Psalm 20. And also, that movie um, that I was watching, I was telling you about Jeremiah, the prophet, and Hezekiah. That is um, on uh, YouTube. Hmm. Let's see what we got here. Jeremiah the prophet. There you go. Let me get you the link to that. It's um uh, it's called The Bible Collection, Jeremiah, nineteen ninety eight, full movie, Patrick Dempsey and Oliver Reed. Okay? And I'm going to put a link of that there on my Facebook. Right here. So you can see that, okay? Maybe you'd like to watch it, maybe not. But I got that YouTube uh, where I can watch the, get the music and watch uh, the movies ad-free. And I think it's worth $12 a month. And I don't have any other, other streaming services except Curiosity. The Curiosity stream for uh, $15 a year. Okay, and, and uh, Cloud Music, I got that, but I'm not getting that no more. Since I got, I didn't know I was getting free YouTube music. I don't think I'm getting that. Because I like cloud sometimes, okay? Can't be too cheap. Okay, let's see here. But I can conserve money, okay? Let me see. Uh, I see a lot of people. Let's see, confirming a few people. Okay, I will confirm a few people here. They want to go on Facebook. Now, but if I see you ain't get no clothes on, uh, I'm going to have to get rid of you, Okay. And then you would have to get a new handle to get back on my uh, Facebook. Okay, because there's other people here too. Not just you. Alright. But lately I haven't seen any naked people. So people, people have been doing good. Okay. Alright, let's see what we're going to do here. Let's see if I posted that. I did, I, I did post it. And, uh, and I made sure I'm working. Let me see. Okay. And I'm going to put a link of that there on my Facebook. And I also want to test the music too. Make sure the music is working good. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go right here. This is Psalms 20. Verse 1. Okay. Trust in the name of the Lord our God. And this is perfect because you know what? I told you there's a spiritual power behind everybody. Right? Behind all successful people. Okay. Now look. No name above Jesus. Uh, it says right here. Philippians chapter 2 
verse 9 through 7. King James Version. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. And let's just confess that now. We confess, Father, that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. All right, and uh, it says in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, that there is salvation and no one else, for there is no other name under heaven by which men must be saved. Okay, and uh, Ephesians 1.21 Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion in the name of Jesus. Therefore, God has, uh, Philippians 2, 9 and 11, God has highly exalted him. Uh, okay, above, uh, highly exalted him. We already read that one. So, there we go. Uh, there's no name above the name of Jesus. No other name. Okay. There we go. What does it mean that Jesus uh, is the name above all names? Well, it means he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Okay, that's what that means. All right. I'm just saying there's any other uh, scriptures here. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this link. I got this link here. And this is from Christianity.com And it has a, a wiki uh, Jesus Christ and what does it mean that Jesus is the name above all names. Dot HTML. All right, just remember Christianity.com. Okay, uh, forward slash W I K I. All right, all right. Now uh, I'm gonna put this on my Facebook. But I've already covered uh, what I wanted to cover from there. Uh, Jesus, uh, no other name above the name of Jesus. So let's do that with my Facebook. Put that on there for you can read it later. Because that goes right in here with Psalms 20. Okay? Psalms 20 is mostly self-explanatory. All right. Alright, Jesus is the name above all names. Okay. Trust in the name of the Lord of our uh, trust in the name of the Lord our, our God. And what his name is that? That's the name of Jesus. And then um, it says that Jesus is Lord. So Jesus, he's the Son of Man. And then when he ascended to heaven and put his blood on the mercy seat. Uh, you know, he put his blood on the mercy seat. You know, they he was kind of like had a little coronation there. When he ascended and went to heaven, they coronated him. Like they do kings on the earth, they gave him a crown. You know, God the Father gave him a crown. And he said, Jesus is Lord. So I believe uh, his new name is Lord. And that means... Uh, the name above all names. Okay. King of kings. Lord of lords. 
Okay? It means the supreme ruler. All right? So, that's why I say in Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay? How about that? They say both in there. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because he's the Lord of Lord and the kings of kings. All right? All right. Uh, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Uh, I'm reading Psalms 20, verse 1. To the chief physician, the King James Version. To the chief physician, the Psalm of David. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the Lord. Oh. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of God of Jacob defend, defend thee. 22. Send thee help from thy sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. 3. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Shelah. 4. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fill all thy counsel. 5. We rejoice in thy salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. 6. Now Know now I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. 8. They are brought down and fallen. But we are risen and stand upright. 9. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Okay? And... That's exactly what I said in my uh, in, the, in the first video I made this morning. Okay. Let me see what numbers this is gonna be. Okay, this is uh, Psalm twenty, but it's gonna be uh, number. The last one I made was this is twenty number twenty three. So this is everything I explained all this already in uh, uh, the first one. If you go to uh, my video under Daniel's prayer double live number twenty for Psalms number twenty three. See, I said that like Psalms, the one for Psalms, because I might have different subjects later on, you know, uh, if the Lord don't come. Okay, right away. Uh, Psalm, uh, tw uh, tw this Psalm 20, this were in part B now. This would be uh, 23 part B, but in number 23 part A, I explained Psalms 20, uh, not using the psalm, but all the principles of the psalm are explained in number 23a. Okay? And, um, and, and very good, too. Let me see. Did I, did I give you the prophet Jeremiah down there? Okay. Uh, yeah. I put uh, the Jeremiah down there. Okay. All right. So Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah was a type of Jesus. And uh, what what happened is, uh, uh, Je they, uh, the um, people who know Jeremiah in Israel, his own people, kept throwing him in prison and throwing him in wells, just like they did. Uh, you have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
But Jacob had a son called Joseph. And they threw Joseph in the well. Okay? I guess another video I got that wrong. But uh, I said Jacob or something. But there was Joseph that got thrown in the well. Just like the Jeremiah got thrown in the well. Just like Jesus, I told you, his spirit went to hell. His soul went to Abraham's bosom. His body went into the grave. Then three days later, is all resurrected. Because in that movie, you remember uh, the King Nebuchadnezzar let the prophet Jeremiah go. He sent his uh, servants to let the prophet Jeremiah go. And he said, everybody in uh, the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar knows the prophet Jeremiah. Just like it says in the book of Acts. And we say that uh, Jeremiah was a type and shadow of Jesus. In the book of Acts, in the uh, sons of Sceva, that tried to deliver uh, this man out of demons. And the demon said, Paul I know, and Jesus I know, but who are you? Okay, because I don't believe he had the Holy Spirit at that time. Now we got to look up the sons of Sceva and Deliverance. Let's see what that is, okay? Let's see what that, let's see what that says, because I don't want to misquote stuff, okay? Acts, uh, let's see, Paul, I know. Okay. Acts, chapter 19, verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Okay. And then you know what happened? Oh, also, in Acts chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, the same followed Paul. This is another ver uh, another incident where this witch was following them, and uh, a wizard. And this uh, same followed Paul in Acts 16, verse 17. 17 and 18 the same followed Paul and us and cried these men are the servants of the most high God which show us the way of salvation in Genesis 3 1 through 5 no the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made okay so therefore uh the devils are right. If you're in Jesus Christ, if you got the Holy Spirit, the devils know who you are. Okay? That's why uh, Nebuchadnezzar and everybody in the kingdom knew the prophet Jeremiah. And Nebuchadnezzar said, let him go uh, to the prophet Jeremiah. And that was like a type and shadow of the devil having to let go of Jesus. Because Jesus, well, the devil really had to let Jesus go by force, but it was just a type and shadow. Everything, it's not exactly perfect, but uh, it's a type and shadow. Because God was uh, uh, trying to, um, you know, trick the devil. Because the devil, if he had known that Jesus was going to reproduce himself to a million uh, more Jesuses, he would never had to. He would never crucify the Lord glory, and Jesus would have been alive forever. Okay, that would ruin the whole plan of salvation, I think. But uh, God always has a way. So we won't we won't say that we'll have a little of salvation because God is God. 
who knows how many different planets who knows who, uh, you know the ways of God I mean you know totally right he's mysterious but we know as much as we know how as much as we can we try to figure it out uh, okay there's another scripture about you know it's uh, the glory of a king to uh, conceal a matter but the honor of a man it's the glory of a king to conceal it but the honor of a servant to find it but it's not exactly that way uh, we look that up too okay glory to conceal I put the word honor there too and see what we come up with. Okay, Proverbs 25, verse 2. King James Version. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Okay? All right. So here, the, let's read this in uh, the Message Bible. Because uh, that's the easiest way to break it break it down. And this one's pretty straightforward. We used to sing this in church. Uh, you want me to sing it for you? Uh, see how the tune goes? Now, I'm not a very good singer, but I would try to sing it for you, okay? Uh, like that church sing it, if I could remember. That was years ago. Uh, it goes like this. Some trust in chariots and... Some and horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Then, uh, they have fallen, but we are risen. Stand up right. Some trust in chariots and some and horses, but we remember the name of the Lord our God. The Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. They are fallen, they are brought down, but we are risen. Stand upright and let the king hear us when we call. I don't know if that line was in there or not. But, uh, we rejoice in the salvation, the name of the Lord our God. Now I know the Lord saves anointed. He will hear from his holy heaven with saving strength of his right hand. They are brought down, they are fallen, but we are risen, stand upright. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Now, I know it's not exactly that way, but yeah, uh, that's a very popular tune. And some people that know how to sing and make tunes can make some, maybe make a song out of that. Okay? I used to sing a, a song as a boy. When I was a boy, I used to sing at home all the time. I get my stereo system. And it's a, probably a cheap one, made out of plastic, and you know, uh, I won in a contest, okay, and I, I, I played music on it, okay. My sister taught me how to sing. She used to sing all those songs back in the 1950s, so she would do her hair like a bird's nest. You know, she used to sing, uh, Teen Angel, can you hear me? Teen Angel, and then all this pop song and stuff like that, and rock and roll. Uh, all that stuff. But you know what? I got the album Jesus Christ Superstar. I used to sing that one all the time. That's a very important turning point in my life, too. And uh, even then, even I didn't even know the Lord, and the Lord was in there guiding me. I didn't even know uh, about salvation. I didn't know that you need to be saved, right? But I was uh, got my rosary every morning, and because I was a Catholic boy, of course, I didn't really say the whole rosary all the time, okay? But uh, I and they had the Ten Commandments on the rosary. And I said to the Lord, I said, okay, today I'm going to try to keep all the Ten Commandments because I was a bad boy, you know? Uh, I, every morning, I try to keep the 
Ten Commandments. I know nothing about the mercies of the Lord are renewed every morning. I know nothing about that. Okay, maybe you don't either. I'm going to look at mercies of the Lord. So when I'm not here preaching, you know what I do? I'm working around the house or whatever. Uh, I watch movies, of gospel movies. Uh, and all kinds of things that are uh, history channels. And educating myself, okay? Because there's never been another, a time like this. Well, you could get all this education for free. And I watch all the preachers and everything. I mean, it's just like a feast. Okay? This is the marriage table right now. Okay? The marriage feast is now. Okay? It's not after you die. You're eating at God's marriage table of the Lamb now. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can't understand it. You're thrown in all darkness. Okay. Now, uh, Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 23 Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 to 23 The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Now, you know, there is um, I even read to you what it says here. In my opinion, this is on the website, on the web page here, on the internet. In my opinion, these are some of the most comforting and reassuring words you will find in the Bible. God's love and mercy, and I love glorious mercy, right? God's love and mercy not only are never ending, but are being renewed every morning. Okay? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lamentations 3, verse 22 to 23. And that's very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Save the image there. Okay, save the image. Okay. Oh, the picture is okay. Okay, up, up, up. Okay. Oh, it's a GIF file. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And that was a song, too. Okay. They put that to music, too. The mercies of the Lord are steadfast every morning. Something like that. And I'll post that too, okay? Here, post it, okay. You can see all I go through. Let's see what comes up. Oh, there you go. There you go, just click on that. And you can just do a search for, you know, I put merciful, renew morning. And you can do a search like that, right there uh, where it says next to the, to the Windows uh, button. Uh, the little search thing, you just press the, the magnifying glass and put put those word merciful renew morning and uh, without hitting the, the enter button, it would just come up to the side uh, the information and that's how I do it, okay? There you go, enjoy that one, okay? I hope you enjoy all this, okay? So, and you people on YouTube, you're not being left out because, I mean, I'm telling you the information right here when I'm speaking it. You might want to stroll over 
to facebook.com forward slash Daniel dot Hanlon H A N like a nest L O N like a nest dot 144 Facebook forward slash Daniel dot Hanlon dot 144 Okay and you know what it's uh, it's all listed on my um uh, Daniel's Fire 325.com and GloriousMercy.com. Now, when you do any of those links where it says, you know, for the forwarding type, uh, I got some caps in there. It, it should be all lowercase because if you do it in caps, if you just copy and paste, it won't work. I mean, you have to, if you click the link, the link goes to uh, it preset with lowercase words. And I did that so some bot can't come and just scam me. Like a bot's copy and, and then they go to the links. Well, this way, they won't be able to go to the links because they, you know, you can't copy and paste. You got to click. Okay, so if you if you copy and paste in that, just remember you got converted to lowercase, all lowercase letters. Okay, you see when you get there. Okay, so now let's go back to what we were doing. All right, right here. I'm going to read the mess. I'm going to read the Psalm 20 in the Message Bible. Because that's the easiest way uh, to explain something, okay? And that would be it for today. Trust, because, you know, you just have to go to uh, Psalms. I mean, go to the, my number 23 broadcast uh, in Daniel's Fire, Double Live Psalms. A, tw number 23A, and it explained this whole psalm without mentioning the psalm. But we just explained it all for the last hour. Okay. All right. Psalm 20, verse 1. Trust in the name of the Lord our God. 1. A Psalm of David. God answer you on the day you crashed. Psalm 20, verse 1. A Psalm of a David Psalm. God answer you on the day you crash. The name God of Jacob put you out of harm's reach. Verse 2. Send, reinforce, send reinforcements from Holy Hill. Dispatch from Zion fresh supplies. Verse 3. Exclaim over your offerings. Celebrate your sacrifices. Verse 4. Give you what your heart desires. Accomplish your plans. Verse 5. When you win, we plan to raise the roof and lead the parade with our banners. May all your wishes come true. When you win, it starts with when you win. Verse 5. That's talking about God. God, when you win. Okay? We plan to raise the roof. And lead the parade with our banners. May all your wishes come true. Actually, that was Calvary, verse five. That's when we won the victory. That's when you win your victory, the blood of Jesus. Okay, verse six. That clinches it. You ever hear about nails clinching it? Nails. You nail something in, then you hit the, the nail down. So that's clinching it so it don't come out. Verse 6. That clinches it. Uh, help's coming. An answer on the way. Everything's going to work out because Jesus was nailed to the cross. Verse 7. See those people polishing their chariots and those offerings grooming their heart and those others grooming their horses? But they're, we're making garlands for God our Lord. Verse 8, the chariots will rust. Those horses pull up or lame, but we'll be on our feet standing tall. Verse 9, make the king a winner. God, the day we call, give us your answer. See verse 7? 
Okay. See, in verse 9, make the king a winner. The second Adam, Jesus. The day we call, give us an answer. That's all about Calvary. That's when we won. Verse 7, those people polishing the chariots and grooming the horses. But we're making garlands for your for our God, our Lord. See, a garland is you bring it over a trophy. You know, you won the race. We love you like in Hawaii. They give you the, the flowers over your neck, okay? There was a horse one time in Kentucky. He was a very, very champion horse. And he won everything. I forget what his name was. And even the kings uh, and queen uh, gave millions of dollars so they could have uh, breeding lights to this horse. But the manager overfunded the horse. And one day he went there at nighttime and pulled the horse's leg and la make him lame. And they put the horse to sleep because uh, the, the manager just wanted, he did that with his jeep at nighttime to his own horse. Because the manager... Uh, the people who owned the uh, property um, spent t uh, borrowed too much money on the horse's name, and the horse was worth because of his the horse's insurance was worth more dead than alive. The horse was worth more dead than alive, and they needed the money, so they made the horse lame and tried to collect the insurance money. Now, are you worth more dead than alive? You better look at your insurance policy. And see, uh, you should make yourself worth more dead than alive. So I might collect on it, okay? But uh, the horses, the the chariots are like these cars, okay? And those horses, like the flesh, right? Okay. The the in Egypt, horses was something special. Uh, it was the uh, the tank of the day. I mean, they had the great horses, okay? And God told them not to go back to Egypt to get any no, no more horses. But you see, some people, they just oh, disobey the Lord. Okay, the chariots were rust and those horses were pulled flame, but we're beyond our feet, standing tall, because God is eternal. God gave us incorruptible seed that will not go bad, okay? That seed in you, like the computer, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, uh, hardwired. Nobody can uh, overlay it with a bad image. Okay, no, the devil can't taint it. He can't make it blight or uh, diseased. The he can't corrupt the file uh, of who God is. Or see, because that's God Himself inside you. Okay, God gave you His own spirit inside you, so you can live because uh, Adam's fell fall, and it's all on loan to you. And it's not yours until uh, you get to heaven and your body's recreated. Okay, but right now, God's trusting you with it. And uh, incorruptible seed. Okay. Incorruptible seed. Okay, one one Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-three. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but uh, incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Okay, that's one Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-three. You see there? So, uh, all the efforts they do on this earth, it's all temporary. This earth is, this earth, this world system, this world system is temporary. Okay? This earth is going to be remade. It's going to be burned up with fire and purified. Okay? You got the earth. And you got God. You got, you got the devil. He tried to take it over. You got God. They have a little war here. God is pulling out with the Holy Spirit and all you can be left is, is is a dunghill in the earth, okay? A dunghill. And I explained that in uh, number 23 verse, number 23A video. Okay? So, 
You know, another good uh, video to, uh, to watch on YouTube is Jeremiah the Prophet by Patrick Dempsey. I think it's 1995, whatever. I quoted that uh, on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, no, I quoted that last last uh, video. I actually um, spoke where that was. Okay, let me speak it again. Oh, let me go. Let me go there again and speak it. Okay, uh, what video that is? You could watch. And that's uh, that Jeremiah the prophet is the type of Jesus. And then uh, the king, blind uh, Nebuchadnezzar or the devil. Or the Nephilim blinded uh, the King Hezekiah after after he killed his sons. Okay, because that's what the devil does to uh, the people of this world. He blinds them. Okay. Hi, Candy Rose, and Ernestina, Kanadu, and two others. Praise God, we're getting some place. Okay, now right here that movie. It was uh, the Bible Collection, Jeremiah, 1998, full movie, Patrick Dempsey and Oliver Reed, okay? All right. And then from Bible-Bible.Knowing, okay, Knowing-Jesus.com, uh, Knowing-Jesus.com, we had uh, 13 Bible verses about dunghill manure. And what does it mean that Jesus is the name above all names about that's from Christianity, Christianity.com. And then we got a search for the search engine, Bing.com, about merciful, renew, and mourning. Okay, that's about God's Spirit renewing us every morning. So... We're going to pray right now. I told you, the victory is on Calvary. The victory is through the blood of Jesus, okay? The resurrection of life and power, okay? In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, blood of Jesus over everybody, Lord God. Blood of Jesus over us. Blood of Jesus over our mind. Blood of Jesus over our past, present, and future. See, we can do that. We can time travel that way. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit was there uh, uh, before the beginning of the world, we were in the Holy Spirit. We were never part of the Holy, uh, never uh, 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 separated from the Holy Spirit. Okay, that power of God that's in us, it's been there. It created the world. The power of God, part of God in us, that light that God puts in us. Chapter one, verse nine. All right, chapter one, verse nine. John, the Gospel of John. God puts a piece of light into us. Okay, he lights every man that comes in this world, every man and woman. A piece of him comes inside of us. That's the very same God that spoke out of his mouth. And our words are just as powerful as his when we speak. That he's called this world into being, created the heavens and the earth. And our words are just as powerful as the creation of the heavens and the earth. Just as powerful and more powerful because it's uh, we bring people into the kingdom we help people become reborn be, uh, and the transformation from a moth to a butterfly I mean transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly on resurrection day when the day that Jesus comes and brings us all out of the grave and resurrects us right and you want to make sure that when you come out of the grave that when you look uh, and you look into the water, you have a little drink of water, and the pool of water, that you do not look like a moth. That you are a beautiful, glorious butterfly. Because you know what happens to moths, right? Now, I said earlier that uh, in this lifetime right now, we're at the wedding feast of the Lamb. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't understand the Bible. Like you can read the Bible. If you say you're unreborn, you, you don't know anything, or you're a sinner. You can read the Bible, but you ne ne you won't understand it. You need somebody to help to understand it, right? But then again, when you're reborn, 
you understand a little bit more about the Bible. It's opened up to you a little bit more because you got more light, right? But now uh, it's really not opened up to you fully until you have the Holy Spirit and speaking and speaking in tongues and you speak in tongues and the God himself intercedes for you okay and you really don't have it really fully opened with the rivers of water flowing through you unless you're basking in front of God's presence every day like for this right we're doing right now we're basking in front of the holies of holy and we're laying the light of God his glory uh on top of the show bread, show bread. We're like the bread, a shot top of show bread. And also, I realize when I'm talking about the rivers of life, like how the river flows through me, you know, and God's teaching me all these things. It's also, I'm uh, we're we're having fresh bread now. I'm breaking the bread, giving it to you, and it's multiplying. Okay. I'm breaking the bread and it's multiplying, okay? Now, when you eat this bread I'm giving you, it's living bread, okay? Living water, living bread. That when you drink and eat this bread, that it's multiplying within you. When you go throughout the day and you're thinking about it, that this is multiplying. You're getting new ideas from this. You're thinking new ways, okay? Uh, oh, I didn't realize that, okay? It's growing within you. Okay, this is not just come and listen to a show. No, this is spiritual. Okay, when we finish here, the angels of God go with you. Angels of God show you things. Okay, the Holy Spirit shows you things, teaches you throughout the whole day. This is not just like one hour, two hours. No, this this is this is a lifetime. Everything I say now will always be with you. It, it will never leave. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit will bring it back to your memory. Blood of Jesus flow on us, Lord God, merciful Lord. Holy, 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 holy. holy. Amen. Thank you for being with Daniel's Fire today. Daniel's Double Live. Please like, share, and subscribe. And bring a friend, okay? And if you like, uh, donate or join the channel, a stream, buy a coffee cup, a sweater, or just be kind to your neighbor. Do some, Give something to the Lord, even if it's just a kindness to a, of a coffee cup to somebody, okay? A hug, a smile, something, anything. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.